they told me pum 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 a newborn king to see pum 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 our finest gifts to bring pum 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 To lay before the king, rum pum pum pum, rum pum pum pum, rum pum pum pum. So to honor him, rum pum pum pum. When we come. Little baby, pum 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 pum. I am a poor boy too, pum 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 pum. I have no gift to bring, pum 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 pum. That's fit to give our king. Rum pum pum pum, rum pum pum pum, rum pum pum pum. Shall I play for you? Rum pum 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 on my drum. Yeah. 
Father, tonight I just pray that you would continue to fill this place, oh God, with your power and with your Holy Spirit as we continue to worship. Move in our time of the word. Move in our time as we remember how awesome the gift of Jesus is and how awesome how awesome the sacrifice he made. Bless us tonight. Continue to have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, greet those around you tonight. Let them know how glad you are to see them at this wonderful Christmas communion service tonight. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. What a joyful night to be together tonight. How awesome is it to have the voices on the stage this evening and to just celebrate Christmas as the family of Christ this evening. So thankful uh, for what God is doing. Just want to throw out a couple of things. The music in the foyer as we came in tonight. Grateful for Mary and Leanne and what a wonderful job they did. Can we give them a hand tonight? and uh, helping us with that. And before we get into the message, I want to make sure everybody received a candle and then one of the communion packs. Those are available in the foyer. If you did not get one, feel free to uh, make sure you grab one of those. We're going to get to uh, communion and the candlelight uh, part of the service here in just a moment. Just want to throw out another mention here tonight. Mrs. Uh, Adam, or excuse me, Annie Adams is with us here this evening, and she's going to be playing her her uh, violin for us here in just a moment, but uh, let's go ahead and give her a hand for her help tonight as well. She does a wonderful job leading our students in uh, music at the school here at Thunder Ridge. In fact, my two boys that were playing the snares tonight are playing the drums because of her teaching and such, and so we're grateful. Thank you for your investment in our students uh, here in the heartland. And... Uh, and for the, change, or the, the difference you're making in their lives. I think music is very important in the lives of our kids. Amen? Amen. Well, we're going to jump into our message tonight. We're going to conclude the series that we have been in called Fear Not. We're going to be looking at a very familiar story in the Christmas setting. We're going to look at a very familiar situation tonight. We want you to start with this video. Minding their business. They were tending to the flock and doing what they knew best to do. They were doing what they'd always done, as a matter of fact. They, they were where they were supposed to be. It's a lonely job, isolated from civilization, but, I mean, let's face it, the sheep were not going to watch themselves. Someone had to care for them. Someone had to protect them and watch over them. They were shepherds, often the forgotten, kind of out of sight, 
And they had an important job to do. But it was a dirty job. No one paid them much attention unless they perhaps failed to do what they were supposed to do. And most nights they were uneventful. If anything, they, they, they had to watch for the predators who, who might come in to do damage to the flock. It was quiet. A night that looked like it was going to be like every other ordinary night. Now imagine with me for just a moment the silence and the stillness in that night. No road noise from the highway like we know in our day. No lights from the street lights from a town distant or afar. No airline traffic above or railway roars from the tracks. Just stillness. Stillness of the wilderness and the sounds of a sleeping herd. And that was the scene. And I want you to imagine it with me for a moment tonight. That was the setting. An unlikely place for such a great announcement to be made. Yet, that is exactly what our God does next. Jesus had been born. Aren't you glad for the gift of Jesus tonight? Our Savior had arrived. And unlike today, there existed no digital means of getting the word out. If we stop and think about it, what happens today when a, a child is born, when we welcome a new member into our family? Well, we send out pictures and text messages, right? We, we, we get on Facebook or Twitter and, and get on to things like email. We, we still use the telephone, but the tel telephone's kind of difficult because you can't send a, a message through the classic phone, right? Nowadays, I mean, if we're really honest with ourselves, when we, we talk about our phone, our kids don't imagine the things that are on the wall that used to have these things called cords. Anybody remember those? We used to have like a 12-foot cord on our phone so that we could try to get, I'm not joking, we had a coat closet just around the corner, and that was about the only area of privacy we had to have conversation. But we send out pictures, we send out posts, we celebrate this, this new arrival of new life, and I want us to think about it with one click of a button today. We can send that information around the world in a matter of seconds. But email wasn't a thing, and Instagram was more like Camelgram. Facebook posts and text messages were not possible, and even photographs, images of the event, were but a mental image saved in the minds of those who were there. But would that stop God from announcing to the world that his son had arrived? We know the answer to that question, absolutely not. God would get the word out. And he would use an unlikely group of individuals to do so. The shepherds were faithful in carrying out their duties. And they would also prove faithful in telling the world that Jesus was here. But before there was telling, there was terror. Before there was joy, there was fear. Before the messengers became, or before the shepherds became messengers, they had to step out from the usual and into the unusual. And I want us to look at the encounter of the shepherds and the angels in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. If you have your Bible with you, turn with me there, or maybe you have it on your phone, and we'll have it on the screen here as we read together. It says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were what? Terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And then suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, 
the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Now, if you've been with us on the last several Sunday mornings, you will see those four words that provided the topic for our Christmas series this year. Do not be afraid. Afraid. Why would these shepherds be afraid? I mean, stop and think about it for just a moment. They're hanging out in their field, and out of nowhere, an angel of the Lord just appears. There's no footsteps. There's no rustling of leaves or, or of, of the other uh, grass that might have been out there. The animals gave no alert or any other signs that someone was coming. The angel simply appeared. Now, in our household, we have a little bit of an alarm system named Bandit. She's a classic basset hound. And she'll let you know, and my kids will, will tell you right off the bat, She's got this distinctive house. She's got her playful bark, or I want to come inside bark. And then she's got this, this, this howl. Depending on how much water she's had, it gets kind of froggy at the end, but it's pretty funny. And she'll alert us. She'll let us know when, when, when maybe somebody's coming up the door, or she knows the sound. It's amazing. She knows the sound of the UPS truck or the FedEx truck. And before I, I even see it coming down the street, I mean, she will hear that, and she will be at the front door doing her, be- her basset hound bellyache bark or what have you. And the UPS guy is like her best buddy now because he brings her a milk bone every time he comes to the house. It's a wonder why she weighs 80 pounds and is only like three inches tall. <laughs> but no, there's no warning, right? There's, there's, there's no sound. He just, he just appears, and I think if we were in that position doing what we have always done, and there before us suddenly is this angel, this, this mighty individual of God. I think we might have that same reaction. What is going on? Time out. <laughs> the angel in this situation was not alone. Somebody might say, well, what are you talking about? Scripture tells us that the glory of the Lord shone around them. Now, what do we know of the visible glory of God? Let's backtrack for just a moment to the book of Exodus. When Moses asked to see the glory of God, God placed Moses in the cleft of a rock and covered Moses with his hand as he passed by. Moses was only allowed to see the back of God. and and, and, and He said in verse 20, You cannot see my face. This is God speaking to Moses, for no one may see me and live, God's glory was simply too powerful. In Exodus 34, when Moses went back to the people after his meeting with God, what unique feature did the people notice about him? His face was literally radiant, was literally glowing. His face, the the glory of God, his, his encounter was evident physically within his face because he had spoken with God church and what that initial response or what was the initial response of Aaron and the people do you know when they saw Moses they were afraid to go near him church listen to me the glory of God is more powerful and more awesome than any one of us can even imagine in this place tonight hello And when the shepherds saw the angel and the glory of God, well, that's probably enough to terrify this group of backwoods individuals in the field. Now, the angel had not come to scare these individuals. He had come to do what? To tell them good news of great joy for all the people. They came with a message, and they came to recruit messengers. And once they laid out the details for the shepherds, they had a choice to make. The shepherds did. They had just witnessed, I mean, literally a heavenly concert. Now, Roger, you've, you've put on some pretty good shows. throughout. The, how, many, how many years have you been playing music? Three. Three. <laughs> You're awesome. There you go. He's been on many different stages, and I, and I love you, brother, but I can't imagine that there's been anything in the world like what the shepherds witnessed that night when the skies break open and the angels begin to have this heavenly party in the skies as they sing, Jesus has arrived. Glory to God. Can you imagine that tonight, church? And when this was all over, would they choose to believe and go see this child, or would they keep in their position 
where they were, maybe out of fear. And we know the story tonight. The shepherds decide to go. And in their going, they step out from where they were into a new reality that the angel had told them about. Now think about this. The shepherds were not supposed to leave their post. Yet the one the angel sang about, this was the one they had been waiting for. When they heard the word, and in their awestruck wonder and in their belief, they journeyed to see Jesus. And what do they find? They find a situation just as God had promised. Look at verse 16. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen them or him, they spread the word concerning what had been told or what had uh, been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. I want you to look at verse 17 one more time. When they had seen him, being Jesus, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. It was exactly as the angel said it would be. They had found and had seen Jesus. And in their delight, they do something worth taking note of. They go and they tell everybody they can about Jesus. And verse 17 says they spread the word. What had been told them. What had been told to the shepherds in the field. Look at the list again. One, he was born in the town of David in Bethlehem. Just as prophecy said he would be. Two, he is the Savior. Three, he is the Messiah. The one they had been waiting for. Four, he was lying in the manger and wrapped in cloths just as the angel said he would be. And when the message lined up with the moment, the shepherds knew that everything the angel had said was true. This truly was the Jesus, the Messiah they had been waiting for. And now they would go and they would tell the world about his arrival. I think it's pretty awesome that God would choose shepherds to go announce to the world Jesus is here. He chooses the forgotten to tell the unforgettable. God used the common to tell of this uncommon event. God used the shepherds to tell of this great shepherd's arrival. And perhaps in, those last, in that last line was the point. You see, the shepherds knew all too well the responsibilities that came with caring for those under their watch. Church, we know today that Jesus came to watch over all. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20, it identifies Christ as our Lord Jesus. The what? The great shepherd of the sheep. The shepherds could identify with the work Christ had come to do. And even thought that title, or even though that title had not yet been given to Jesus, his identity as Savior and Messiah had already been established. The shepherds in the fields, they could not wait to tell of what they had just seen. But all of this could have been missed had they remained fearful and where they were when the angel found them. And imagine the surprise of the town as they witnessed the men of the field running down the streets, knocking on the doors, announcing that Jesus had come. Church, I want us to understand on this evening that we have come together as we have gathered here to be in, in the presence of God and to, to remember the reason of the season. Jesus has come. The Lord is here. Aren't you grateful for that truth tonight? Come on. Our Savior has been born. It is a message that has been ringing throughout the land since the day the shepherds began telling of his arrival. And like the shepherds tonight, we too have a choice. We too have a decision to make. Will we choose to go and to be a part of what Christ is doing? Or will we remain where we are in that well-known comfort zone, perhaps afraid of what lies ahead? God not only wants us to spread the word, but church, he desires for us 
to know the Word, the Word being Jesus tonight. The great shepherd has come to watch over all those under his care. He has come to forgive and to redeem those who would choose to call upon his name. Church, listen to me. Christ has come to deliver us from all fear. He has come to fill us with his joy. He has come to give us life in place of death that our sins deserve. But it's not enough for us to hear that announcement. We've got to be willing to get up and to experience what the Lord has told us about. The shepherds went to see a manger. The shepherds went to see a baby. Today, we move to see a cross. Today we see the sacrificial lamb. We've said this a few times in our series. I'm going to repeat it tonight. Jesus was born to die. Christmas is for Easter. And as great as his birth announcement was, God has announced through his son, listen to me, that redemption has come through the blood of the lamb. But similar to the shepherds tonight, we've got to get up to see what this is all about. We have to move from where we are and draw closer to Jesus. And Christmas, this season, does that for all of us. Christmas moves us from the normal routine of the year into a special season of reflection and remembrance. Christ is the greatest gift you could ever receive tonight. And God has offered him to us all. The question is, will you receive? It was that silent night when the stars turned their gaze to marvel at the earth. When the heavens gathered breathless round a lowly stable. When a young mother wept tears of worship, falling on the baby in her arms. And the song of the earth arose in Bethlehem. Soft as the tender beating of his heart. And all was calm. All was bright. Yet could this be the same God of Abraham, the conqueror of Israel? This baby, this fragile life. Is this child the one who burned his name in rapture across the gasping skies? Whose voice spoke the oceans into crashing rhythms? who crafted the mountains into guardians of the firmament, whose hand ignited the thirst of the deserts and the warring surge of the elemental hosts, who breathed life from dust, broke the oppressor's rule, scattered the chains of his people like sand, and led them through the wilderness with a pillar of flame. Is this child the one whose presence billowed thunderous on Sinai's peak, who surrounded Job with the roaring wind, stood defiant in the raging furnace, wrote judgment against tyrants, and blazed on the lips of the prophets, scorching history's pages with the fury of his might. Could this be the same God who chose to come as the vulnerable king, setting his throne on straw and manger, drawing forth the tears of shepherds, Receiving the gifts of wandering travelers, his fame unknown in this world. He is Jesus, the one who thunders through the heavens, yet whispers to our hearts. Who reigns victorious, yet bows to serve the broken. He is God in the fury. God in the silence. 
He holds this mystery balanced in his hands, holds our questions till they lose their need, until all we see is him. He is Jesus. Until all we see is him. Through everything that's going on in our world today, through the busyness and the brokenness, do you see him? Will you receive him? Will you receive his forgiveness? Will you receive his redemption? Will you receive his victory, his freedom, his eternal life? I want us to bow our heads and close our eyes all across this place this evening. And we're not going to get the instruments going quite yet because I want us to experience the stillness, if we can, where the shepherds found themselves that night before the angels appeared to them. God made a tremendous announcement to them through the angels that his son had arrived. And tonight we can know him. We can live for him. We can experience life to the full or life more abundantly through him. But you must make the decision. You must make the decision to receive him tonight, to give your life over him. And this evening we want to give opportunity for that. Maybe you're here tonight and your relationship with Christ is not where you feel it should be. Or maybe you've never had a relationship with Jesus. Tonight I wonder if we could turn back to him with no ambient sound, just maybe the sound of the Holy Spirit whispering to your heart. If you're here tonight and you'd say, Pastor, I would like to pray. I'd like to give my life to Jesus tonight to be forgiven of my sins, rededicate my heart to him. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If that's you, just raise your hand right where you're at so I can see you. But we just want to pray with you tonight. Amen, buddy. I see you. Anybody else tonight? Praise God. Church, I wonder if we could do this. If you raised your hand, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And I wonder if we can chime in together, brothers and sisters in Christ, in support of those who have raised their hands tonight to say, I want to receive Jesus. But would you pray with me? Say, dear Jesus, I know that I have sinned. I know that I have messed up. But in the stillness of this moment, I recognize that you gave your life for my sins that I might be forgiven. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Come into the, my life and be the Lord and Savior of all I say and do. And from this day forward, I see you, my Redeemer, my friend. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And heaven rejoices. Come on, can we just give God praise in this place today? Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. And heaven rejoices tonight. And if you raised your hand, we would love to just talk with you maybe briefly after service, give you a few things tonight to, to help you in that decision that you made for the Lord tonight. But before we have the music come back up, I want to remain in this stillness. I want to remain in this silence tonight. Every one of us should have one of the communion servings tonight. And each one of these servings has a peel off top. There's a wafer right there on top. And there's the juice below. And we'll go ahead and prepare this, uh, this evening to receive communion. What communion is all about is remembering what Christ did for us on the cross, what he came to do. Church, I can tell you right now from my experience in life, I would not be here tonight if not for what Christ has done for me. Is there anybody else here tonight that can relate to that statement? I would not be here tonight if not for what Christ 
did for me. It's by His grace. It's by His grace that I'm here today. And honestly, it's by His grace that I continue to make it through each and every day. Amen? Amen. Communion is an act of remembrance. Communion is simply saying thank you to Jesus for what He did for us. When we look to Second Cor- or excuse me, First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 26, it says this, "For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and he, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me." And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, "This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me." For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. The bread representing the body of Christ. The grape juice representing the blood that He shed for us. As we take the elements together here in just a moment, we're going to pray over each one. But I want us to just reflect on what Jesus has done, what He came to do. We celebrate His arrival in the Christmas season. But we know why he came. Church, he came to set us free. Aren't you grateful for that tonight? Let's pray for the bread tonight. Lord, we thank you for the bread. We thank you for your body that was broken, that we might be made whole again. You took on our chastisement. You took on our punishment. You did so so that we could be set free, so that we could be forgiven of all of our transgressions, so that we could be forgiven of all of our sins. Tonight, we ask that you would bless the bread. Lord, we receive it in remembrance of you. We give thanks for what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's receive the bread together tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, the cup that we hold in our hands representative of the blood that you you shed on the cross for our sins. That new atonement, that new covering that we have, Lord, that has wiped out all of our sin. It was the necessary price that had to be paid, and you paid it in full. And we're so thankful for that truth tonight. Lord, I pray that you would bless the cup this evening. We receive it tonight in remembrance of what you did on the cross. You poured out our life or your life for us so that we could be given new life, forgiveness, and freedom. We receive this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's receive the cup together tonight. Amen. Amen. I wonder if we could stand to our feet tonight and just begin to thank God for what he has done for us. Mrs. Adams, if you want to go ahead and prepare to come. If my ushers that I talked to, Larry and Gary, if you guys could come and help in just a moment. But I wonder if we could just lift a hand towards heaven and if we could just begin to give God our praise this evening. If we could just begin to vocalize our praise to him right now. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we praise your holy name. We praise your holy name. We are so grateful for all that you have done. We're so grateful for the sacrifice that you have made and for the light that you are in this world, in us and through us. Father, what a joy it is to know you tonight. What a joy it is to be forgiven. What a joy it is to be set free. Father, continue to bless this time that we have together as we continue to remember the sacrifice that was made, as we continue to rejoice for the the arrival of your Son. Move in your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to praise him tonight. Larry and Gary, if you would like to go ahead and start lighting the candles this evening. But let's think of what Christ, let's continue to reflect on what Christ has done for all of us tonight.
the other. So I pray we will allow the light of Christ to be spread through this Christmas season, one to another. Amen? The shepherds moved from where they are. They went and they saw Jesus. And the moment they saw him, they couldn't keep the news to themselves. in a world that is full of chaos and confusion. People are looking for good news. Let's share the good news to this world. Amen. That candle that you hold representing the light of Christ within you, let's make a point to share that light to everyone we can this Christmas season, to our friends, to our families, to our neighbors, Let's allow his light to shine, amen? Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you, God, for this moment. It's time that we get to reflect and remember. It's time we get to say thank you. I pray, Father, that we would allow your spirit to move in us and through us. God, that we would share the good news with as many people as we can. But Father, we're so thankful for the gift of your Son, so thankful for the change he made in our lives. I'm so thankful for this family tonight, God, this body of Christ. I pray, God, that you would continue to move powerfully in each and every one of us. Keep us safe as we travel. Bless our family gatherings. And help us to remember to give praise to the one who is worthy. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing. In your mighty name, we pray tonight. Amen. Merry Christmas, church. Merry Christmas. God bless you. Thank you for coming out tonight. We're going to sing that one more time as we're dismissed tonight. But we look forward to seeing you again real soon. Have a Merry Christmas. Amen. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. Oh, you're all together lovely. All together worthy. And all together Center, we love you. We'll see you back here next week. Amen.